Hey, what's happening, folks? Uh, if you're watching this video, then most likely you are here to learn about this nifty new little computer called the Raspberry Pi. Uh, what is the Raspberry Pi? Well, that's this little guy right here. Um, and this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials that I'm going to be making for this computer. And I'm hopefully going to teach you everything that you need to know to get up and running with this little guy. So stick around. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, if you're already familiar with the Pi, you can completely skip this video. It's really meant to be a beginner introduction for those who might not be that familiar with it yet. So fair warning, don't complain if it's boring. So what is it exactly? Well, it's a small credit card sized single board computer that is intended um, to help people learn more about programming, how the computer works, etc. Um, the CPU is basically a system on a chip. And what that means is it pairs an ARM processor uh, that's used by a lot of embedded systems and cell phones with a Broadcom GPU, which is actually a fairly powerful graphics processor that's capable of displaying full resolution 1080p HD video. Um, the RAM is pretty sparse. It's only 256 megs, and that is also shared by the CPU and GPU. Okay, so moving on. Um, there are actually two versions of the Pi. Uh, the A and B model, but I'm really only going to be focusing on the uh, the B model since it's the one that I have. Um, the newer B model starts at 35 bucks, and that includes just the board. Uh, and on the board, there are two USB ports, uh, one Ethernet port, an HDMI, RCA video out, stereo audio out, um, micro USB, which is it's not an active USB port. It's really only um, where you're going to uh, provide power over a USB cable. And uh, then there's an expansion port called the GPIO port. And you won't really need to worry about that. It's basically for more advanced users. Um, and they're gonna be adding uh, Arduino accessory boards or ribbon cables for communication with other hardware devices and like major electronics projects, robotics, sensors, etc. So that stuff's cool and all, but uh, it's kind of outside the scope of these tutorials. Um, and Let's see, so getting to why it's actually cool. Um, I think the Pi is cool because you know it's a fairly complete computer. It runs on very little power. It's small, it's cheap. I mean, it's 35 bucks. That's less than you know dinner for two people out in the town. Um, and it helps uh, people that are new to computer hardware uh, get into it and get their hands dirty without the cost and the risk associated with more uh, expensive standard hardware. Um, another thing that's cool about it is that uh, the GPU is pretty powerful. It can play 1080p video, which makes it really attractive to a lot of people as a media center PC as well. And I, I know I'm sure a lot of people have bought it for that specific reason because it's a cheap, you know, multimedia uh, PC. So uh, moving on, what can you do with this thing? Well, like I said, if you're completely new to hardware, the Pi can really help you learn about those uh, individual components of most modern computers. And if you want to learn to program um, the Raspbian OS that's based on Debian Linux um, that is recommended for the Pi comes with a lot of the tools uh, for programming to help you get started. And uh, you might ask, well, you know, why wouldn't I just want to learn programming on the computer that I already have? Well, you can. And that's perfectly fine. But, you know, you can kind of think of the Pi as your little playground and your test computer that you don't really have to worry about breaking if you screw something up. Um, because, hey, even if you do break it, what, you're out 35 bucks. So, but if you don't care about all that, you don't care about programming, you don't care about learning the hardware and so forth, um, the Pi also makes a really cool little media PC. You know, get a case, hook it up to the network, install another uh, OS. Um, that's based on Linux called OpenELEC, which is uh, basically a backend for XBMC, which is the Xbox Media Center. Um, and you know, plug that thing into your TV and you are ready to start streaming uh, video and audio content to your high def television. So that's all I'm gonna cover for this tutorial. Um, we're gonna move on to the next one, which is uh, you know, what hardware accessories are you gonna need to get up and running? How do you power this thing and so forth? So uh, click on over to the next tutorial and check it out. And thanks for watching.